Dear friends, we would like to present to you Bratislava, the capital of Slovak Republic, through the eyes of ambassadors of foreign countries who serve in Bratislava. Madam Ambassador, I'm so glad that you accepted our invitation to have a chat about Bratislava in these complicated times. Uh, even if this was a very tough year with a lot of restrictions and suffering, uh, I believe that Austria and Slovakia, two neighborly countries, showed enormous degree of solidarity and helping uh, each other because we are getting so intertwined, not only through our economies, but family life and so on. Uh, were there some moments where you were proud that you represent the country in these tough times and you see these type of degree of commonalities and feeling of belonging towards uh, region which went through turbulent times and now we are showing new level of cooperation. I think there have been events on a rather larger scale and also on a, on a, on a very small scale. Um, for instance, particularly when the borders were blocked, to help individual families to cross. And as you mentioned, families live on both sides of the borders. Uh, it's not just politics, it's not just uh, the economic situation, it's us human beings. And you had little children crossing from one parent to the other, so helping them uh, to, to overcome the obstacles and making many phone calls, driving to the border. Um, we got incredible help from Slovakia actually in repatriating uh, Austrian citizens. Uh, so driving through the night from mm -hmm. a military airport to the border, helping families to cross the border and getting very down to earth, very quick help from the Slovak authorities was mm -hmm. incredible. And we were extremely happy, happy that we could also help our neighbors, particularly when it then came to the testing end of October, mm -hmm. uh, when we had sort of uh, medical personnel from the military, from the Austrian military, helping at testing sites in yeah. Petrosalka. Mm -hmm. So I think that what, that's what's so important about being neighbors, that you're also friends, that you help each other, and that you not just cooperate in, in the good days, mm -hmm. but also in the, well, maybe demanding and tough times. And I think that really worked yeah. out well. And we had contacts on each and every level, whether it was our presidents mm -hmm. who found a moment in summer to meet informally, whether it was other politicians meeting in endless video conferences, and whether it was just us here at the embassy yeah. trying to reach out, taking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of phone calls. I would like to move to city Bratislava, Presburg, yes. city through which we share a lot of history. Also the place where we are, which are some sites uh, and parts of town or surrounding of town which are dear to you, close to you, which resonates with you? I very much enjoy walking around the town, um, off the beaten track. Mm -hmm. And maybe this is one of the, I wouldn't say nice things about the pandemic, but you can literally walk around town and you can realize it belongs to its inhabitants. And while the situation should improve again, and maybe it's already too empty, <laughs> um, it's nice not to see it totally swamped and overcrowded. Yeah. And you can find the time to look at buildings, to kind of, inhale history and, and architecture and I very much like actually the architecture in town not just in the old mm -hmm. town very much also the very modern architecture around Eurovia mm -hmm. and uh, from there to see some of those very very modern buildings I think now it's important to bridge I see. nicely <laughs> between the new and the old but I think it would be extremely nice to organize architectural tours, for instance, mm -hmm. not just focusing on the past, but also on those buildings of the 30s of last century, like the functionalism, mm -hmm. and with some architects who worked here, but also then worked in Vienna or in Austria, like Christian Ludwig, for mm -hmm. instance. Uh, so I think to, to focus also on those less known places is, is, is very important. Mm -hmm. And of course, 
a big advantage of Bratislava for sure is it's compact in size. Mm -hmm. So you can focus on architecture here and then you just turn a few corners and you're in the, out in the green, which is nice, strolling up the hills. So I tend to take the staircases um, all the way up to, to whether it's Slavin or sort of some of the houses up there on the hill because it's nice always to look down mm -hmm. and get a bit of an idea what a town is like, the layout of a city. And of course, you then just turn another corner, around another corner and you're at the waterfront. And that's something I have yeah. to say, that's what I love. Mm -hmm. um, so Eurovea and that part of the... Not just that part, but also strolling up on the banks of the river I and see. then crossing Stary Most, for mm -hmm. instance, and then walking upstream all the way to SMP Bridge and then back into town mm -hmm. and then you can make up your mind whether you go for some coffee in downtown or you walk sort of along the river. I think the banks of a river, the water, that's always calming mm -hmm. and it's always a changing site and it's always nice also I think to approach a city, a town from the waterfront and that's something one can do very nicely in mm -hmm. Bratislava. Bratislava belongs uh, among cities with a lot of greens, mm -hmm. uh, forests, nature, uh, during your time, uh, particularly in last year, you couldn't travel so much through Slovakia because all For of us are reasons. lost uh, <laughs> here. Uh, have you discovered some surroundings uh, more? Are there mm -hmm. some where you would like to take some visitors if they would come just to enjoy nature of Bratislava? Devin is always very nice, I think, and not just going up to the ruins, but also again walking along mm -hmm. the water, the Morava River. Uh, all the way down where it sort of um, enters the Danube. Also for historic reasons, I have to say, because I love history. Mm -hmm. And I think it's always important also to, when you have visitors coming, to show them the history. And, and uh, the memorial site there is very touching, very important. And to see the water, how it, on the one hand, combines our countries, but also how it has separated. Mm -hmm. We share the waterfront, yeah. we share the waters, but on the other hand, those rivers have separated us mm -hmm. for, for, for quite some time. And to a certain degree, they still do with <laughs> not many bridges yeah. crossing the Morava River, I have to say. Um, so I would certainly take people there. Mm -hmm. It's very nice. Um, I love, but that takes maybe a bit longer, also going to Modra, mm -hmm. which is a lovely little town. And I think it's important also for people when they come to Bratislava, not just to be stuck to the city center and have some goulash, some yeah. kapusnitsa, some beer or some coffee, but also to reach out a mm -hmm. bit and, and to combine it with the surrounding small towns. I think it's always a good mm -hmm. idea, like going to Pezinok, yeah. to the gallery there, for instance, which is beautiful. The glass gallery mm -hmm. is just beautiful in Pezinok. And uh, Modra to, to buy some ceramics mm -hmm. and to maybe have a good glass of wine and they have some very nice ice cream places. I mentioned that before once, which is a bit kind of funny when you talk about Modra and some nice ice cream places. But <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, to, to reach out, I think yeah. it's extremely important to combine the city and its surrounding towns. Are you getting ready for summer? Do you think, based on what you read, know, predict, uh, that situation is going to change through these measures taken not only by individual countries, but also by whole European Union, which is developing these COVID passports and other measures. So how do you see upcoming few months and summer? I have to say I'm, I'm an optimist by nature. So I uh, very much hope that the situation will improve, not just uh, for individuals, for, for our populations, which have really gone now through, through very, very tough months, more than a year. Uh, also for, econo for our economy, but yeah, just to get life back in full swing. And um, particularly, I think with, with, with tourism, there's a very good chance for the neighboring countries. They just have to grab it yeah. because people may still be reluctant to travel far. They may be prevented mm -hmm. actually from, 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 from uh, traveling far. And I think that will make uh, the neighboring region even more attractive. Mm -hmm. Um, also because hotels may be perhaps closed for a longer period of time. This is a perfect location for a day trip. 
and not just the town of Bratislava. Again, also the surrounding mm -hmm. parts. Uh, you can, as you mentioned earlier, combine nature and city life. Hopefully, uh, culture will open up again, mm -hmm. theatres will open up again, museums will open up again. This is something I really, really hope dearly because there are very nice places here in Bratislava, uh, whether it's the ballet, the opera, the concert hall, the small clubs, you know, you can go to a jazz concert, you can go to a vinotheque and get some, some concert and it's such a vibrant mm -hmm. scene and, and I really, really hope that uh, culture will kind of wake up again, will be allowed to wake up again. And, and this is also something one could combine in a day. Yeah. You end the day with a concert mm -hmm. or with a visit to the opera, the ballet. You can go to the museums during the daytime. So that's what I really, mm -hmm. really hope will happen. And I really hope that if not for the entire EU with this passport, for, for the Green Pass, mm -hmm. um, that at least for the region we will develop concepts and I think as we speak there are meetings taking place to, to elaborate concepts uh, to really support tourism uh, which again is not only an important feature for, for the economy of our countries but also for people so to get a bit of distraction so let's and hope to learn a bit more. Your uh, optimism uh, will uh, come true and that we will be able uh, to live more relaxed as we call it often normal life, which combines uh, also this tourism, meeting each other, but I particularly like what you stress that because of our proximity and closeness that uh, now there is new opportunity for this tourism or discoveries of one another in these tough times until all uh, channels of communication and all travels will be coming back as we used to know it before COVID-19 pandemic. I very, very much hope so, particularly people are eager to get out again. Of course, we started appreciating yeah. video conferences and documentaries and, and meeting each other via, uh, via the screen mm -hmm. and for sure very useful tools. But I think now people are getting hungry again and thirsty again for culture to do sort of um, for even shopping, yeah. let's face it, and meeting each other. And last but not least, going again to restaurants, yeah. having a coffee. You know, having a coffee to go exactly. is a very nice thing, but sitting down in a coffee house, having a nice slice of cake, and for me that's always very important when I discover and explore a city or a town, also here in, Brat in, in Bratislava or also in, in the rest of Slovakia, to sit down in one of the street cafes and watch people walking by mm -hmm. and, and sort of, again, sort of uh, crap the atmosphere. And this is for sure something I miss. Thank you again for this conversation and I wish you happy Easter and let's hope that we will have Viennese Cafe as soon as possible on the bank of uh, Danube River. And Slovak pastries, <laughs> not to forget. Okay. Thank you so much for the invitation. Happy Easter to you and uh, the team and I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much.